So this video is going to be for my friends with the vintage RVs. Actually, it could be for anybody with any RV or camper, but the vintage RVs seem to have sharp corners, and I read a lot of people talk about how they can't seem to cover them and keep the cover on them for any more than a year because the sharp edges tear the corners up. Now I've been using the same cover for years now and this is the first year I'm actually going to replace the cover. So I got about uh, three and a half years out of a cover and it probably would have lasted another year or so but it was starting to get tethered and it was starting to basically just rot. Uh, how I've been doing this is I take some of this green cheap carpet at the top and uh, I just went down to the hardware store and I cut a length off that was a couple feet longer than the RV and I throw it on top and that takes care of all the sharp corners and angles on the top. And then the very next important thing is take any sharp corners or angles and protect them with something. I like to use these pool noodles. You can buy them cheap at the end of the year. And I basically wrap my mirrors and anything sharp in this material. And I just do a fast tape job on it. it. It'll stay on there. I just split it down the center and it's tight enough that it'll stay by itself. But I run some tape around it just for some extra precaution to keep it on there. And it'll last all winter with no problem. Now anything sharp on the sides, I just X with some masking tape. It comes off pretty easy and a little bit of uh, Goo Gone will take it off at uh, springtime when I'm ready to use the camper. And anything in the corners again, I take the pool noodles and I wrap the corners up. And anything that sticks out like the door stops, I just wrap with a little bit of tape to keep some friction on it. And I stick a pool noodle on it and that'll keep it there. Anything protruding, like antennas, I take off, and I'll probably actually put a little piece of tape around the top of the screw so I uh, won't tear anything up there, and I don't want to lose the screw. Uh, the windshield wipers seem to be not a problem, so I never worry about them, and this is pretty much how I do it. And this will let one of those tops last, like I said, at least three years, probably five if you're careful with it and you buy a decent top. I've just been buying some pretty inexpensive ones from Amazon. They seem to hold up okay. Now the big step is winterizing those lines because nobody wants to fix their lines in the springtime after they freeze and bust. And so what I do is I actually buy this stuff ahead of time. I buy it when it goes on sale, usually at the end of the season. You can typically buy this for $0.99 cents to $2, and I buy 10 gallons. Now 10 gallons may seem like a lot, but when I explain to you what I do, which is probably quite different than what everybody else does, you understand why I buy 10 gallons. So what I do is I fill the back tanks in the RV, uh, with 10 gallons. Uh, those tanks are original and they're steel. Albeit these tanks are galvanized, they still will corrode and rust over the years. I'm in really good shape. The pink stuff has a corrosion additive that prevents rust and corrosion. That is one main reason why I like to fill these tanks up with the pink stuff and leave some of it in there. Uh, that way as the tanks condense, it'll uh, you know kind of mix with the pink stuff and hopefully the corrosion is kept at bay. Now I also have the original hot water heater, and uh, or I should say cold water heater that makes hot water, if any of that makes sense. And I need to probably clean this up a little bit next spring because it's starting to get a little gunky and dirty. Uh, but it also has an aluminum tank and that pink stuff with the anti-corrosive additive helps kind of preserve that as well. So the first thing I do is I put the 10 gallons of pink stuff into my freshwater tanks. I also empty all of my regular uh, gray water and black water tanks so they're empty and I purposely turn on the hot water only and I fill my hot water tank all the way up with the pink stuff. Um, this does a couple of things. It makes sure that if there was any water in my tank, it uh, also kind of purges that with the pink stuff. If there was anything in there, it'll mix with the pink stuff and hopefully not freeze. And then it also keeps the aluminum from corroding inside. Not that it probably would, but you know this is a very old RV and I would like to keep it intact as long as I can. Now after I've turned the hot water on, I've filled the hot water tank and the pink stuff is flowing out the spigot, I go ahead and I turn the cold water on and the hot water off. And I wait until I get more pink stuff coming out of the spigot. And then I know all the lines in the RV are full of pink fluid. Now you have to do this to every spigot. That seems pretty obvious, but I should say that. And then the next thing I do is I pour some of the pink stuff down inside the drains to fill the traps so they won't freeze as well. Now the next thing I do is I bring the batteries into my garage. I take them out of the RV, I bring them in the garage, and I put a maintainer on them. Uh, it's just my garage is semi-warm uh, consistently anyhow, and I can keep an eye on them. And I only have one maintainer, so I swap back and forth between the chassis battery and the house batteries. Uh, you know, like when I think about it. Just keeps them topped off, and it'll make those batteries last that much longer. 
And one last thing you need to be concerned about, specifically depending on where at you live, is some type of rodent control. Now, where I live, we have a lot of field mice. We live out in the country, and I like to use decon, but I will say a lot of people prefer not to because they are afraid that a mice will climb inside, eat the decon, die, and stink up the RV. So you might want to use a mouse uh, trap or maybe those sticky pads. I've been really lucky with the decon. I, I found that the decon is consumed and gone a lot of times, and there's no sign of mice. My theory is they come on in, they find the food, they eat it, and they get sick before they set up camp with their family. They don't even have time to make a nest. At least that's kind of my theory. If I'm wrong and I ever find a dead mouse in the RV that stinks it up because of decon, I will make a video on it, I rest assured. And if you've had that happen, write it down below so we all can read about it and be warned. But for now, this is what my, my go-to is. Put some decon in and I kind of forget about it. Now the camper is snug in a bug, it's wrapped up, it is weatherproof, and I'm not going to worry about it through the winter. Uh, I've had really good luck with this particular cover. I will put a link down below on this exact cover that I bought. I bought it from Amazon, and it seems to be a pretty good one for the price. Now I normally do a lot of do-it-yourself type videos. Occasionally I do something a little wonky like covering the RV or an occasional tool review, but take a look at some of my other videos, like and subscribe. At the very least, you might be entertained.